Hello and thanks for joining us on our show. With us is Dr. Michael Lightman. Hello everyone. Our topic for today is the recognition of our evil egoistic nature. Our basic assumption is that our nature is evil. Evil meaning in relation to some kind of standard. The standard is the creator or the higher force, the quality of bestowal. We as the created beings, we, we learned that we as the created beings are the opposite of this force. And therefore in relation to this force, our nature is evil. If he's good, then we're evil. We can put it that way. Well, usually we don't come to it that way. We don't consider it as evil, etc., etc. But we simply see that from generation to generation, people live their time in vain. They try to fill themselves with some petty pleasures, but eventually it doesn't pan out well. Not for us, not for our children, not for grandchildren. We don't have real pleasure in life. Life is short. And what's bad about it is not only that it's short, but also it itself is very ignoble, empty. And so to live a short and empty life, we see that it has no real value. Meaning from generation to generation, life is felt by us more and more, not as a present, but as a misfortune, as something pressuring, as some kind of bad fortune that simply imposed this existence upon us. And therefore, it's not said just so that lucky are those that were not born compared to those who were. But all that might be a result of us not seeing the world the way we could have really arranged and seen it. And therefore here appear different methods, theories about what to do about ourselves and life. Bala Sulam writes in the article Peace in the World, he says that everything in reality, good or bad, and even the most harmful in the world, has a right to exist and must not be destroyed and eradicated from the world. We must only mend and reform it right. So what follows is that, that it's possible to do something about our life and invert it from bad to good. This is what he writes. So probably it's possible. If you can give an example, let's take some horrific murders that occurred or a genocide, how can that state, which is extremely harmful, how does it help in advancing humanity? The thing is that we consist of one very strong desire to receive pleasure, meaning we want to feel good. And when we feel bad, then that state pushes us into the next better state, the way it seems to us. And the next is a better state after some time. We discover that we came out of the previous state and we discover that the current state is also bad. And it pushes us to the next state, etc., etc. And this is how we advance, this is our fate, this is our development, this is everything that goes on with us. So how can we stop moving randomly in this Bronian motion? From this bad to the next, to the next, etc. But how can we advance, see our path, in order to advance in it from the bad to the good and from the good to the even better, etc. This is something that doesn't happen. Were we to look at all of human history, we could actually see it. We see that humanity simply goes from one blow to the next to the next, and this is how it advances. It doesn't advance to better states. There are periods that are better, periods that are worse, but actually nothing better, seriously better, doesn't happen. And therefore, we have a problem. What's going on with us, with nature? We look at nature so wise, smart, created all of these bodies, qualities, intellect, emotion, etc., etc., all this enormous 
superorganism, all the ties between everything. Yeah? I understand that it's all in order for us to acknowledge the evil of our own nature. Right, that we're these little bugs but that are extremely repugnant. So all the blows are in order for us to acknowledge the evil of our egoistic nature. Not only acknowledge, but through this acknowledgement, probably we can come to correction, to change ourselves, and correspondingly to change all of nature. Because, on the one hand, we're the most egoistic beings in this world, in nature. On the other hand, that we're the most active, powerful. So, we need to somehow determine what do we do with our tremendous potential and our great big evil ego. It's interesting how your teacher Rabash writes in his article, The Mightiest of the Mighty, he writes that, who is the mightiest of the mighty? He who makes his foe his friend. So mighty is he who conquers his inclination, evil inclination. So I look at other people, obviously, through my egoistic prism. I see them lowly, ignoble, myself as exalted. If I do the opposite, meaning I somehow make an effort in order to see them exalted in my eyes, then I become a hero. Hero meaning that I overcome my natural egoistic nature. Right. A hero is he who defeats himself, because actually, besides that, we don't need to do anything. If we could defeat our egoistic nature, then to that extent we'd simply enter a state of good, common good. So, what follows is that nature has created us egoists. We judge everyone to the measure of our own corruption, to the measure of our own flaws. And so when I look at someone and I see certain negative qualities in them, I always see negative qualities in others, I need to somehow understand that these qualities are actually in me. It's a kind of an evolutionary process. Right, the recognition of evil. So I see in you always negative qualities on purpose, and after thousands of years, I need to come to the recognition that these are my own qualities, yes. But were it not for you, I'd never see these qualities in me as negative. Right, like an animal. It's like a mirror. Meaning at first I live for thousands of years, I see only negative things in everyone, complaints against everyone, and then, on a certain level, I start understanding that it's all in me. Well, it's not simple to come to that. Well, after a few thousands of years, a million years, I don't know. But that's the direction. Right, this is what Kabbalists write to us about. We read these things, all of their essays, we understand that they speak the truth, but we don't see it. They discovered it emotionally and put it in their essays, in their works. We, we read their works, but we don't feel it yet. From what we read, we gradually need to come to the acknowledgement of it that this is truly how it is in nature and that this is how we perceive it. So first of all, there is the knowledge, then the understanding, and then the emotional attainment of it. Knowledge, I, I read about it that everyone judges according to the measure of their own flaws. It was written the Talmud some 2500 years ago, something like that. That's knowledge. Then I start understanding and seeing it even that this is really how I see it in others, and I start kind of understanding that it's in me, but what does it mean? All the negative things that I see in the world, they're in me, that's the recognition of evil. Everything that happens in the world happens in your perception. What is outside of it, you can't say. The world is depicted in us. But you understand the evil unraveling in the world all the time. A Kabbalist feels that it's all because of him. No, not only that it's all because of him, but that it is all me, if already, if we want to dig a bit deeper, that it's all me, it's all me. 
I can't see anything besides my own eye, my own desire, my desire and everything that happens in it, all the depictions, is the world that I perceive. Kabbalists look at the world and see only good things. If I correct myself to that measure, I see that everything's good. Suppose a Kabbalist sees that a few millions of people died of starvation. He doesn't see it all. He feels it all. He feels and sees how those that die actually, that it's a positive occurrence? No, how is that positive? He's to blame for it because he has not corrected in himself all those qualities yet. Then they, they're all on him, so to speak. No, suppose he corrected himself. How can he see such a thing as children starting to death someplace as something positive? No, he can't see it as something positive. He can't. He understands that it's still not corrected because he can't correct the whole of creation, but a certain part of it he does. But he has no complaints towards anyone, but only towards himself. Only towards himself. Well, at least that, that you have no complaints toward anyone else. So, today we talked about the recognition of evil, meaning we need to acknowledge that all of the evil is in us, not in someone, but in us, and then all complaints will be against us. Right? Correct yourself, you'll correct the world. And that would already have been good were each of us to accuse only himself. Thank you very much. Till next time.